Hey sellers, welcome back to uh, another video. Uh, it's been about a month since our last content. Uh, apologies for the lack of content on the channel. Uh, as I said in my last video, I had a couple of essays I have to do for my schooling. And uh, the one time that we were able to play, or should have been able to play, Dave was sick and or has hockey tournaments for his boys. So um, yeah, it's been a month. Again, apologies. and uh, But we're going to get back into a regular study of releases. Uh, we're going to try and do one scenario a week, uh, three takes of each scenario, so that's three weeks in a row. Each video take will be broken up into three or four separate videos, uh, depending obviously on the length of the scenario. And we're going to be adding a couple other things to the channel in terms of content. So uh, this is going to be one of them. It's going to be called Initial Recce. And this is where I'm going to uh, go through a fairly detailed analysis of the scenario as well as my approach to it from an attacker and defender perspective and uh, they'll be followed by the three takes as we play the scenario to see how actually valid my uh, my uh, my planning is and then we're going to follow up with another segment which we're going to call spend casings and this is going to be a detailed analysis after we've played all three takes to uh, really determine what's the best course of action for both sides. Now, uh, Dave and I are both of the opinion that if you play a scenario once, you don't really get a feel for it. Uh, you may miss things. Maybe rules aren't that squared away. There could be some SSRs that throw a kerfuffle into things. You don't factor in certain avenues. And you don't really get an appreciation unless you do it three times. Now, some people uh, think of that as anthema. They'd rather just play a different scenario every time. But Dave and I are not of that opinion. We think um, there's value to be added from playing it three times. So we're going to do that uh, spend casings report, which will follow the three uh, take releases. And uh, yeah, it'll be a depth and depth analysis of best courses of action for both sides. So if you approach a scenario for the first time, we'll have done the legwork for you and hopefully shown you what works and uh, what likely doesn't work for each scenario. So that's something to look forward to as we uh, increase our content for this channel. Uh, so first up, we're going to be playing a uh, scenario from the Battle for France scenario pack from Low Cut Publishing. It's a package of 10 scenarios in early war action between uh, Germans and French in May slash June of 1940. Um, it's a pretty good scenario pack. Uh, I've done a, a review of that already, which you'll see in the link at the end of the video. I'll throw that in there. But uh, yeah, early war action. So um, this is going to be actually a French counterattack against the Germans, which uh, did happen. And uh, the scenario we're going to be playing is number three, which is uh, French Courage. It takes place in 20 May of 1940. Um, uh, a French tank regiment basically is going to be uh, uh, counterattacking against a village. Um, using those uh, Char B1 BIS uh, tanks, which have really good uh, frontal armor. Uh, I've got 37 longs in the German defense. I'm playing the German stays doing the French again. And um, the, uh, they're called pop guns or door knockers in the vehicle notes for a reason, because they were really ineffective against a large number of early war French tanks, just because of their superior armor. Uh, 37 long has a 9 AP, which is not a lot when you're looking at an 8 frontal armor with uh, an up armored turret, so it's a 10 on the uh, the turret front. So front shots are only going to work if it's a critical. More than likely, I'll have to do flank or rear shots, and I don't see Dave offering too many of those uh, to me. So uh, I could try mobilization, but again, one of the vehicle notes for the French tank is that it is... Um, protected on the sides, Scherzen or the French equivalent, and therefore I need a four or less after I get a mobilization hit, which are hard enough to get uh, to actually mobilize the tank. So uh, again, we'll get into the specifics of the order battle as we uh, get into the scenario. So let's look at the scenario itself. So we have four boards, uh, as you can see here, and uh, basically the victory conditions are there's five multi-hex buildings of which the French need to occupy four at game end. Now, the game is only seven turns, which is not a lot of time for the French to move. Uh, French setup is primarily on this board with the infantry, with the tanks coming on from the west or from the south. German infantry set up in this village location, 
and uh, the five AT guns that the Germans have set up on either this board or this board uh, initially hip um, in concealment terrain, but uh, not in place. One of the SSRs is that they're not in place. So there's going to be five guns set up between these two boards, which will hopefully be able to interdict the French, more than likely infantry, less so the tanks, just because, again, the tank is, or the AP round is so ineffective against the tank. Now, because it's 40, the tanks, or the guns, do not have the heat rounds, um, which they are capable of firing. They don't get that until uh, 42, I believe it is. And, uh, again, their AP is only... Uh, four and they don't get the APCR until later on as well uh, because of the early warness action of the game. So looking at the SSRs, um, bearing those victory conditions in mind, oh and there's one wood overlay over here on the left of the screen uh, which you can see, uh, <clears throat> which is really only useful for initial gun setup maybe for the uh, for the French, they can get some good you know, ass shots on the tank. That might be a good spot to set up. I'm not convinced overly of that, but uh, again, we'll get into that as we get to it. So SSR is EC or wet. Being May 40, the uh, grain is not in effect, so it's all plowed fields. Uh, no kindling. So this uh, section of trees over here um, that would be nicely kindled by the Germans uh, are not allowed to do that. They're by denying the French that terrain because they're really going to need this covered approach to get into the village barring moving on the open ground um so no, no kindling uh afv cannot be abandoned which means the french cannot drive a tank up beside one of the victory condition buildings dismount and then occupy it with uh thereby achieving their objective so they cannot be abandoned makes it harder on the french the germans also get a variable number of concealment counters to act as dummies so in this case i rolled a four plus three is seven dummy counts counters which I can use to augment my uh, my frontage so uh, and then of course the, uh, the guns themselves can set up hip and concealment terrain they can use bore sighting as a defender but they cannot be in place so uh, that might only Im be impacted by the, uh, the the mortar firing on them in the trees or something along those lines I'm not quite sure why that one's there but uh, we'll figure that one out as we go so uh, all the SSRs favor the uh, Germans, with the exception of the kindling attempt, one which favors the French. Um, there's only one playthrough of this scenario on ASL Scenario Archive. There's no raw data, just Scenario Archive, and it's a German victory. Uh, so obviously hasn't seen a lot of playthroughs that have been posted. Uh, we're going to do three, so uh, we'll get definitely a better feel for it, uh, of which we'll probably post one or two on Scenario Archive. Uh, probably number two and three, not the first one, just because it's initial take. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so we'll see how it goes. So a lot of the SSRs favor the Germans, and uh, one favors the French, the uh, lack of kindling attempt. Uh, order of battle, uh, as we can see here, is um, uh, the F Germans get five squads with a medium and a mortar and a one liter. Uh, defending the village initially, and they get a platoon that arrives from the north edge of board uh, 71 on game turn 4. So a total of 8 squads facing off against 3 French tanks and 9 four, five, sevens with 3 liters and medium and a mortar. Um, or th uh, sorry, 2 LMGs and a mortar. So um, almost evenly balanced. Uh, now the Germans get five AT guns, but again they're door knockers as they were called because they're ineffective against these up armored tanks uh, less, less we get, again, as I said, uh, rear shots or potentially a really hard mobilization shot. So uh, quite evenly balanced forces. So I think the scenario actually favors the Germans uh, reflecting the one win on the scenario archive. We'll determine whether or not that's the case, but I think this SSRs and the terrain and the order of battle favors the German just because it's so evenly matched. Normally the attacker outnumbers the defenders. In this case, it's quite close. But again, five AT guns, which are ineffective against tanks, means I'm probably going to use them against the infantry more than not. So this is the map board, as I said. Um, Germans up here, French down here, AT guns in either uh, quadrant. And the French tanks coming in from uh, either this side edge or this side edge here. I anticipate them coming in through here. So 
this is basically what the setup I think is going to look like. Uh, the French, obviously I have no idea how Dave's going to set up. French tanks will probably potentially come in through R10 and up this way. Um, I don't see them coming in through the south just because there's just no tr nowhere for them to go except up here. Now, these tanks have a lot of vehicle notes to be read, one of which is that they are radialists, which means they have to move into platoon formation with some exceptions. Uh, now, they use Morse code in their tanks, according to the notes, which means uh, a nine or less will allow them to do independent actions. But uh, generally speaking, they're going to be radialists and therefore all the the hindrances that that applies. They've also got two main guns. One is a hull mounted 75, uh, which the driver fires, I think. And one is uh, the 47 in the turret, which the one man turret uh, fires. So, um, yeah, interesting uh, tank combination. Now, as I said, these tanks have an eight frontal armor, uh, up armored in the, uh, the turret. And, uh, uh, even a six on the sides and back. Now they have a weakness on the upper left, on the left side, which actually means it's a. Um, uh, how does that work? Uh, I can't remember the exact ruling, but basically it's easier to get a critical on the side. I think it's a three or less initial die roll to get a critical on the side, the left side, and the the rear, front, and right side are going to be snake eyes to get critical so the slightly weaker armor there's some kind of defect on the left side which uh you know if i could make sure that dave always approaches from that way um might improve my chances but again you're still looking at a two or a three so it's going to be hard to get but there's a lot of rules for these that uh, dave is going to have to be aware of to really maximize their potential they've also got three firepower worth of machine guns which um, <clears throat> it's only three firepower, he's going to be buttoned up. So you're, lo you're looking at a minimum of three plus one in open ground. So it's going to going to be almost ineffective for the machine guns. Their primary purpose, I think, is going to be for screening purposes and or uh, dropping um, possibly smoke and or uh, shooting up uh, the troops. Um, yeah, so we'll see how those go. Uh, my AT guns, on the other hand, they also have a lot of vehicle notes, none of which are apply because of the early war action. So while they have quick setup, they have no AP. They have no heat, which comes out in 42. And um, so it's uh, basically 9 AP, and uh, which is, as I said, ineffective against a tank. So I'm going to be using the HE, I think, more than not against the infantry setup. So let's put those tanks back to where they were. And let's look at the German setup. So my plan here is bearing in mind that Dave is going to come up through here. I, my initial setup force is this uh, formation here, of which I have two dummy stacks in the center. Um, I don't see Dave moving through the open. Uh, it's too much of a potential death trap. Uh, um, I don't see him coming up through here. Although I do have a nice medium here, which can do hopefully do in fire lane if he does choose that route. So I, I the only way I can see the French attack and the way I would attack is to come up through these buildings. There's uh, two buildings here. Let me oh, let me turn those off. Um, and there's two sets of woods here with an orchard and a uh, another building here. So this would be the best way coming up through here. Uh, nice covered approaches to get into this area. And then you bring the immense French firepower on my scattered forces because I have to cover all avenues. Uh, that's the way I think he's going to do it. But I have to still account for the open channels. So therefore, I've set up two guns down here. Their job is to anything coming down this road, this guy can maybe get some shots here in the open. Uh, I've got these three guns set up on the north, which are going to be in the woods anything entering these adjacent hexes. Uh, I'm going to bore sight this hex here. Uh, let's bore sight that. I'll probably do another bore sight uh, maybe in these woods. Uh, no, let's go a BB-10. And this guy here, I'll probably bore sight E-10. 
No, I really don't need it because if anything moves adjacent, they're going to be uh, already getting a neg two for that. But uh, um, just improve the chance of hitting because I really need to eliminate these squads before they get into the woods, before my reinforcements show up to help alleviate my pain. So uh, HE shots are going to be coming out of these. Uh, I think I'm going to ignore the tanks unless a target opportunity arises. Uh, but yeah, they, let's deal with the infantry with these tanks. Maybe this guy as well. I'll probably bore sight. Uh, DD-10 will probably be a good spot. Um, which would give me a lot of opportunity to whittle down anything coming this way. Uh, I have my own mortar. Uh, Dave has one as well. So his initial prep fire will initially probably go against one of these five targets in the trees why not you get an air burst effect i'm hoping obviously he'll target one of these ones maybe he'll think this is my machine gun uh because it got some nice uh, approach maybe i'll take my mortar hopefully he doesn't my mortar will be almost useless until i think he gets into the woods and i wouldn't say that it's it can be fairly effective with its high rate of fire but i need to get rate of fire for it to do any kind of damage and i'm only going to be uh, attacking on the uh uh, the two table, I think it is too. So, um, any rate, so my setup is orientated towards him taking this. Now I'm gonna. It's initial week in the center. Uh, I'm hoping that this machine will alleviate anything that comes in this way. These guys, the mortar will help, you know, trim down anything that gets into the woods. I'm hoping my four guns do a number on the infantry before he even gets into this building, which I dare say will probably be his first target. Unless he decides to hold fire base, bring on his tanks, and then using some kind of armored assault covered approach, come up through the center. But that is too much of a delay. I don't see him doing that. It's only seven turns that he has to work. So more than likely, he's going to set up something like this, maybe in these woods here. He's going to move into these buildings and woods, occupy that, and then he's going to move his way into here. Um, my thought is once he makes it into the woods, which I see him getting into by turn three if not turn four he has to be in the woods by turn four if he has any hope of achieving these objectives that's a lot of terrain to fight through um and now the tanks will help him blow up my guys uh again with good die rolls he may actually have a chance uh i can stay concealed as long as possible but i'm eventually i'm gonna have to take pot shots and strip concealment for myself and that makes it easier for him to shoot me up so uh, my plan is to give ground, and these guys, assuming they live, will move into the buildings. Uh, this guy's going to stay here and basically work his magic on here. Uh, these guys who were in this building, I'm probably going to start moving them to here. Uh, and then um, the mortar's going to stay and die, as are these guys. This guy here, again, we're going to retreat slowly back into the, uh, into the village. Uh, this building will be gone, no doubt, by turn 5. Again, he has to be in this building by turn five. Otherwise, there's no hope in hell he's going to get these other three. Again, this one here on the right is just, it's too far away. There's no way that he can reach that, barring a complete collapse of the Germans. So by the time he reaches this building, my reinforcements should be able to roll on. I'll probably throw him in G4. Uh, this guy can maybe move back into here, help occupy that building. I'll have those reinforcements sitting in G4. And I'll have one squad or two here sitting here. These guys might be able to eventually uh, migrate over to here, offer some more robust defense uh, again in those buildings there. So that's how I see the attack unfolding. Uh, again, I have no idea where these tanks are going to play. Um, my guns will do a number on his infantry at the start, but then they're going to quickly be overrun barring huge rates of fire tears but again i'm only going to get one shot here as to move one hex maybe get a second shot here and then i have to intensive fire probably run out of rates by that point so these guns will quickly collapse and it's only 37 long which is on the four table i believe so um uh, let's check on that yeah on the four table so um again i got to roll low i'm looking at morale checks now, plus side is because they're French, they have a less, uh, a lesser broken morale. So, if I can break them, uh, they've had three leaders, but uh, it can be harder for them to rally. 
as long as I keep them under DM. So I, I, um, yeah, they should be okay to break. Um, I'm anticipating what 40% casualties by the time he makes it into the woods with good rolls on my part, which really is going to impact what he's going to have left to assault. There'll be a lot of broken troops in this area with any luck, and they'll have to, uh, uh, fight that. Maybe I can have my machine gun up here. G7. I can advance him into here. Or just leave him here. And then I could uh, skulk. Different options. And here, uh, my battle plan is obviously going to be fluid. But you're looking at something like this from a German perspective. Um, so these tank uh, AT guns will probably be gone. All these French troops will eventually work their way into the woods. I see the mortar being back here as a fire base. At some point, I'm sure it'll drop the tube or maybe bring it up, you know, one hex at a time. Um, but this mortar is only going to be effective for the first three turns. And I don't know how many of these troops are going to make it into the woods. As I said, 40% casualties. Um, uh, stuck back, you know, probably hopefully broken. So uh, basically it gives them, what, one, two, three, four... Let's say six squads, three tanks that work their way into the village proper. Now, three squad, six squads is still a hell of a number against my own number of troops. Uh, I can see, you know, these two buildings here going. Potentially this one here. I think this one will be last. Just again, based on the open ground available to him, it's much better for him to approach here and then work his way into this building than it is to attack this building directly. So again, obviously, I don't know how the French are going to attack. Um, this is only my perspective on what it's going to be, but it'd be really interesting to see how close I am. Well, that's the initial recce for uh, French Courage May 1940 action, French counterattack versus Germans. Uh, again, three hard-to-kill tanks, uh, even immobilizations, it's going to be a four or less after I immobilize, which is hard enough with a plus five to immobilize. Um, it's going to be hard to... Uh, remove those tanks. And once he gets them in close with their 75 uh, infantry gun and their 47 uh, turret gun, it's um, it's going to do a number on the uh, the uh, the troops. But yeah, so uh, that's initial recce. And uh, next video you're going to see is going to be actual take one, part one video. Don't know how many turns it's going to cover. But, uh, yeah, we'll see how close my assessment of the scenario came. Uh, let me know what you guys think of the format. Uh, initial recce followed by the three takes, followed by the spent casing videos. I'm really curious to feed, hear feedback on that. Um, again, apologies for the lack of content, but uh, as I've live-lined the reasons why, hopefully that explains it. And uh, that's going to change as we uh, ramp up speed. Uh, a teaser, We're, Dave and I are thinking of going to Caslow, which is this year, gonna, or 2023 in May, is going to be held in Fredericton, New Brunswick, Canada. And uh, we're thinking of entering that tournament, which will be our first ASL tournament. Hopefully our rules set knowledge is up to the task. Um, five scenarios is a lot. Hopefully we can get through the uh, the plays. Um, takes some stamina to, to do five scenarios in a row. Uh, with minimal breaks in between so again we'll see how that goes uh, something to contemplate but uh, you won't see any gameplay footage of Caslow it's not the venue for it with uh, focusing on the scenario but there might be some other stuff coming out again we'll see how that goes uh, let me know what you guys think of that all right enough babble from me let's get into uh, the next uh, video which is going to be French Courage take one and we'll see you guys in that video have a good one bye